Welcome to WebStar Plus. How to fetch data from an API using React.js. Fetching data from an API is a common task in web development and React.js makes it easy to do so. But there are certain steps involved to do it properly. We can use fetch with async await to get the data, store it in state and show a loader before data is displayed on the page. In this video, we will look into that. But before that, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because I am bringing similar content on this topic. Okay. First, we will need to import use state and use effect hooks from React. Use state hook allows us to store data in state. Use effect hook allows us to perform side effects such as fetching data after the component has rendered. In the component, declare state variables using the use state hook. Loading to display loading when data is being fetched and Records state variable will hold the data that we will fetch from the API. Note that loading state has boolean value that is true. It will be true or false. Records state has empty array value initially. This will be array because then we will be able to map this array or manipulate data from this array. We can manipulate data from array using array methods. There are plenty of array methods available. Before return, this is use effect hook. Inside the use effect hook, use the fetch API to fetch data from the API endpoint. This is dummy API for testing purpose, JSON placeholder. They have this method to show how fetch is used. The fetch function returns a promise that resolves to the response object, which we then convert to JSON using the JSON method. Let's copy this. Save. console and this is one record that we have got now this is working i want to display to do list from api to do's copy the url replace url inspect console id title id and title we've got the data records 200 records so we changed the endpoint this is endpoint api endpoint comment the console log then data set records data set records populate fetched data for this state records update state variable records with the fetched data using the setter function returned by the use state hook this is setter function set records for records state variable Components, app, and here we've got the data. In state. Let's remove this console log. So data is there. Now we have to render the fetched data in component. But before that, let's handle loading. Before fetching data, set loading to true after data has been stored in state set loading to false in state now this is ternary operator or conditional 
if loading is true, show loading text, just this string, otherwise show something else. That something else is our data. Return div records from state. If we have records in state, map records. And let's say in records, item is single record. Use unique ID, item.id as key and display the title from each item in record, item.title. Save and we've got the records. Data is being displayed. So we used the use state hook to declare the state variables for loading and records. Two states. Records state initially contained an empty array. Inside the use effect hook, we used fetch API to fetch data from the API endpoint. This is endpoint or API URL. And then we updated the state variable records by using set records setter function with the fetched data. And then we rendered the fetched data in component by mapping over the records array and rendering each item as a div element containing title. This here can be used to mention dependencies for use effect. We can add dependencies here. When this dependency will change, use effect will be recalled. So the data is being displayed, but we are not done yet. This code can be improved. We can use fetch with async await. And this code can use a separate function because we want to keep use effect clean. For that, declare a separate function with async keyword. Set loading to true and false at start and the end of function. In the middle, use fetch with await keyword. Then use response.json with await keyword. And then if data is present, update state. Now we can call this function here instead of all this, just like this. And it's working. Only function call in use effect. This is clean, right? Now, if we have to fetch more data, we can define more functions like this outside of use effect. And then we can fetch more data and use function calls in use effect like this to keep the code clean and easy to understand. And you can also use try catch. Like this. And I have used arrow function here. If you don't want to use arrow function, you can declare this function like this. Function fetch API, use async keyword before the function keyword. It will also work. Okay, what is async await? What is its benefit? Async await is a way to write asynchronous code in a more readable way. In traditional asynchronous programming, callbacks or promises are used to handle the execution of code that takes some time to complete, such as network requests or file operations. This can lead to code that is difficult to read and reason about, as callbacks can be nested and hard to follow. With async await, you can write asynchronous code that is more readable. The async keyword is used to declare a function as asynchronous 
and the await keyword is used to pass the execution of the function until a promise is resolved. Here, the fetch API function is declared as asynchronous using the async keyword and the await keyword is used to pass the execution of the function until the promise returned by fetch is resolved. The code is more readable and easier to understand as the flow of control is clear and the error handling is centralized. This is what async and await is all about. The code is clean. We used fetch with async await and try catch. We used loading state. We fetched the data and displayed it using array map method. That's all for this. I hope I explained it in detail. Okay, I hope it helped. Like, share, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.